Our previous video looked at the circular flow of income and that provides a really useful uh, foundation, I suppose, to build on into the uh, the topic of this video, which is the multiplier. Now, this was an idea uh, put forward by a very famous economist, John Maynard Keynes, in his general theory uh, back in the 1930s. Um, and to start with, we're just gonna very quickly review what we saw in the last video in terms of the circular flow of income. So if we remember, we had households and firms, and then we have our circular flow, which is where the household uh, spends money, so the expenditure on the goods and services which are produced by the firm, and the firm sends uh, income back to the households as factor payments. Uh, and we said that wages were a kind of a main consideration of that. So that was our basic circular flow. We also had, if you remember, we had uh, reasons why uh, funds would leave the circular flow. And we said that uh, we had, in particular, we had three reasons why funds would leave the circular flow. So funds might leave in the form of taxation to the government, that funds might leave in the form of savings going into banks and the financial sector, and that funds may leave uh, as a result of import spending and those funds go overseas. So we had re three reasons why funds might leave, and if you remember, we referred to those as the withdrawals from the economy. And at the same time, we had three reasons why uh, we might have funds flowing into the circular flow. So uh, the government takes funds out through taxation and puts it back in again through uh, government expenditure. And we saw previously that uh, there are savings coming out. The corresponding injection is investment from the financial sector. And we had import spending coming out and the corresponding injection is uh, the income received from exports. And we referred to those as the injections. And that was basically our circular flow. So we had our, our main circular flow, which was the, uh, the household expenditure and the factor payments, three injections and three withdrawals. Now the multiplier effect uh, was the idea, as I said, put forward by Keynes. And what he suggested was that these injections and the withdrawals will actually have a bigger impact on the overall economy than just the size of the injection or the withdrawal. Um, and that, that was this idea of multiplying, so multiplying up the scale of the impact on the, con the economy so that it's more than just the, uh, the size of the injection or the withdrawal. So just to g give a little bit of an example then about how that, that may actually work, um, we're going to imagine that, uh, that we, we're going to start with the government expenditure here. So uh, if the government spends money uh, in the economy, if the government um, were to, uh, let's say, um, you know, they were spending money, they were providing a subsidy for some research and development or something like that, then uh, then that money would go into the firm. But the, it's not just going to stop there. You know, that money going into the firm is then going to be used by the firm, um, perhaps to employ uh, some researchers to to do that uh, to do that uh, that research and development activity. So what's going to happen then is that the injection is then going to also pass along this route to the household. Some of it will be, uh, will be taken out uh, by the company, uh, but some of it will continue on to the households. So these researchers are now uh, seeing an increase in their income, and as a result of that, they are likely to increase their level of expenditure. So the researchers go out, uh, you know, maybe they go to uh, go to the go to a restaurant or something to celebrate their higher income. Now the restaurant is an example of the firm. So we then have the uh, some of the the income earned by the researchers goes back to the firms again in the form of the spending on that meal in the restaurant. And then obviously the uh, the restaurant may then use the uh, use the money to uh, to pay the chefs and so on. So uh, it gets transferred back to the household and then the chefs uh, you know will decide to uh, go to the cinema or something like that so we will end up transferring it back to the firms and so on and so on round and round and round we go now as it goes round each time some of the income will leave because of these withdrawals so each time it, it goes round the loop 
The idea essentially would be, though, that for every pound that, uh, that the government put into the economy, uh, obviously that, uh, that injection of the one pound, that would increase the level of, uh, of national income and aggregate demand by one pound. But then as it moved from the firm to the household, it would also add on uh, a certain amount. And then as it moved back from the households to the firms and so on, and each time it moved around, although the number would be uh, probably diminishing slightly because of the withdrawals, overall, the impact of that investment on the economy would be greater than the amount of money which was actually invested. And the the size of that increase, the, the size of the multiplier, depends essentially on how quickly uh, the money is withdrawn. So essentially for each extra pound which is earned within the economy, how much of it is taken out of the economy in the form of a withdrawal? The more money that's taken out, the less stays within the circular flow and, and continues to lap around and continues to add to AD. So the more we are withdrawing, the lower the size of the multiplier. Um, but let's have a look at how we actually go about doing this as a calculation. So if we reduce the size of this and move it up to the top, we can, we can keep that there so, uh, so we can refer back to it, because uh, I think that will definitely be useful for us. But, uh, but let's move on and let's consider how we actually calculate the size of this overall effect on the economy. So we said that the multiplier is dependent on the size of the withdrawals. And we also said that the greater the number of withdrawals, the smaller the multiplier will be. So what we want really is uh, what we call the reciprocal of the withdrawals. So what the size of the multiplier is 1 divided by what we call the marginal propensity to withdraw. And this idea of marginal propensity essentially means for every extra pound, oh, Mr. D, uh, for every extra pound which is uh, earned within the economy, how much of that is withdrawn. So the idea of marginal is for each extra pound. So if we want to calculate the, the multiplier, we want to know essentially of, for every extra pound which is earned, how much of it is going to leave the economy. And then we want the reciprocal of that, one over that. Now, equally, we know that the withdrawals um, are that there are three different types of withdrawals. So actually, a better way to consider this might be to consider one over the marginal propensity to save, the marginal propensity to pay tax, and the marginal propensity to import. So those are the three different types of withdrawals. So what each of these are telling us is, for every extra pound which I earn, how much of that pound is being saved, how much of that pound is, is taken out again in the form of tax, and how much of that pound is uh, taken out because I spend it on something overseas. And another way that we could write essentially the same thing is that it's going to be one over 1 minus the marginal propensity to consume. So the marginal propensity to consume is whatever I do that doesn't um, get counted as a withdrawal. So you can imagine if, if I earn £10 more and I spend £8 of that, then my marginal propensity to consume would be 0 0.8 my overall marginal propensity to withdraw would be 0 0.2 because I would be withdrawing 20 pen, uh, uh, I would be withdrawing 20%, so in that case I would be withdrawing two pounds. So my income goes up by 10 pounds, I spend eight, I withdraw two from the circular flow, that two will be made up of some money which I save, some which I pay tax, and some which I use to buy a product from overseas. So these three uh, formulae that you see here, these are all essentially, they're, they're exactly the same way. They will generate the same number because they're just looking at the same thing from, uh, from a different angle. And all I do then is I multiply the value that I get out of that by the size of the uh, injection. So so if we uh, think about a situation where the government, uh, let's say, spends 100 million, 
that is the size of the uh, government expenditure. Okay? And we are in a situation where the uh, marginal propensity to consume within the economy is 0 0.4. Now, if the marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.4, then that means that the marginal propensity to withdraw must be equal to 0 0.6. So we know that 60p of every pound which, uh, which is earned is withdrawn from the economy. So what is the overall contribution of that 100 million pounds to the economy? It is the 100 million multiplied by the size of the multiplier, which is 1 over 0 0.6, which means that that uh, investment by the government overall adds 166.6 million pounds. So what this tells us then is that actually if the government uh, were to intervene in this way and were to spend that sort of money, they would spend uh, 100 million, but as it moved around within the economy, it would actually add 166.6 million to the value of the economy. Now that's the kind of the, the I suppose the, the introduction to it and the basic way that we that we go about calculating it. Uh, the next video is just going to look at it in a little bit more detail and particularly think about some of the uh, the problems of uh, of using this and the uh, the limitations of this technique.